Over the time, we have built amazing structures and cities to accommodate the ever-growing needs of humanity, providing shelter, commerce and community for countless individuals across the globe. But alongside our achievements, we have faced nature's powerful forces, especially earthquakes, that become more deadly as cities have grown and collapsing buildings cause loss of life and affecting economics of that region. Despite this, we keep pushing forward as engineers have found new ways to build structures that are more earthquake resistant and people can evacuate the building safely after an earthquake. Today we will discuss how buildings are built earthquake resistant by discussing different methods and their practical implications in buildings around the world. What is an earthquake? An earthquake is a strong shaking of ground caused by movement between tectonic plates along a fault line in the earth's crust resulting in seismic waves. These waves shake the building both up and down and side by side by strong force which cause damage to buildings. And how much it shakes depends on structure, mass and stiffness of a building. Tall buildings tend to amplify the motions of longer period motions when compared with small buildings. Which means tall buildings are more flexible so they sway more during earthquakes. But even shorter buildings can get damaged when the incoming waves frequency match with the natural frequency of buildings called resonance. Like this phenomena happened during the Mexico City earthquake in 1985. So engineers have designed earthquake resistant techniques that can suffer damage but cannot collapse on people trying to get out of buildings. One of the most common ways to prevent damage and protect buildings is to use shear wall system. They are typically made of reinforced concrete and are strategically constructed from foundations to top across the periphery of building like a panel. They are also added to the building's interior when the exterior walls cannot provide sufficient strength and stiffness or when the allowable span width ratio for the floor or roof diaphragm is exceeded. They are commonly used in mid-rise and high-rise buildings as they are economical systems to resist earthquakes. One of the most effective ways to protect buildings from earthquake is the base isolation system. In this technique, superstructure is detached from the foundation using a series of bearings that allow the buildings to move independently from the ground during an earthquake. So when an earthquake hit the structure, these bases deflects and disappears the seismic energy by lowering the natural frequency of the structure. That's why the base isolation minimizes the displacement of a structure and protects from collapsing. These bases are usually made out of combination of flexible materials like rubber, steel and lead that acts as an energy dissipation mechanism. Base isolation technology can make medium-rise reinforced concrete structures capable of withstanding earthquakes, protecting them and their occupants from major damage or injury. It is not suitable for all types of structures such as taller buildings as base isolators have a limited ability to cope with tension, meaning a taller building could overturn or topple during an earthquake. The building side will also be an important consideration when looking at base isolator use. For example, there may not be the sufficient space to incorporate a moat around the building. Furthermore, base isolation is designed for hot soil, not for soft. Another method for controlling seismic damage in buildings is the installation of seismic dampers which reduce the earthquake vibration on structures. There are various types of dampers such as viscous dampers, viscoelastic dampers and tune mass dampers. The real practical example of damper is the Tapai 101 in Taiwan. This super tall skyscraper combat earthquakes with 660 ton ball that is known as a tuned mass damper. This giant counterweight knee direction. So when a building starts to shake, the tuned mass damper will move in opposite direction so it will lag behind as a tower sways and will absorb the kinetic energy by moving in opposite direction. Tuned mass dampers are used in skyscrapers around the world including the super skinny Stainway Tower in New York and Dubai's sail-shaped Burj Al Arab. 
The next method is the bracing system that is widely adopted as a primary lateral load resisting system in medium and high rise buildings due to their inherent substantial lateral stiffness and load resistance. It is considered the most effective method for fusing existing reinforced concrete structures. This structure system also provides the higher stiffness and a moderate ductility through yielding and buckling of braces while all other structure members such as beams, columns and connections behave in an elastic range. However, under strong seismic excitations, this system is prone to story mechanisms especially when beams are not designed to carry the unbalanced vertical loads caused by the buckled braces. Last but not least, making buildings invisible to shock waves by using shield around the base of the building. As earthquakes travel in waves, the researchers are working on invisibility clock that will protect buildings during an earthquake by redirecting seismic waves around them and leaving the buildings virtually untouched by them. So these were the methods that are used in making buildings more earthquake resistant. And if you found this video helpful, then you can share and subscribe our channel for the more informative videos.